Well, uh, some 27 years ago, I was working in the Tumbarumba Batlow area uh, in New South Wales, a well-known fruit growing area with orchards everywhere. I noticed at that time, there was a lot of waste. There was waste left on the trees, there was waste on the ground, and there was waste in the processing facilities. I thought at that time, I would be able to convert that waste into a poultry feed or a uh, pig feed. Unfortunately, uh, waste and materials like that weren't popular to have recycled at that time. 25 years later, recycling is a major issue and everyone is interested in recycling. So I was able to expand that original idea 27 years ago into recycling all food waste, taking food waste from hospitals, retirement villages, cafes, restaurants, hotels, everywhere where food waste is uh, produced as a byproduct. In fact, 30% of all food that's produced is never consumed. So the idea is to take that waste and convert it into valuable products such as poultry feed and liquid fertilizer. The full-scale facility will include the key process steps in the pilot facility. The containers are modular in design. Depending on product characteristics, process steps can be interchanged. Container 1 is the heat treatment step, comprising of a direct steam-injected screw conveyor. Killing the microbes is achieved via a combination of time and temperature. Steam is used in this case as microbes are more easily deactivated in wet conditions. Container 2 contains the maceration and dewatering step. Reducing particle size aids in increasing surface area for more efficient dehydration. It also aids heat penetration to the core of the particle. Container 3 is the dehydration container. The pilot facility utilizes a direct heat rotary drum dryer. Dehydration is important in that it ensures that the crumb generated is shelf stable by removing water activity. The heat applied during dehydration also serves as an additional microbial kill step. Container 4 is accumulation and blending. Here, the dehydrated crumb is passed through a hammer mill and then stored as a shelf-stable fine powder. When the material is ready for blending, the correct proportions of powder waste can be collected according to a feed recipe. The ribbon blender ensures a homogeneous mix. Minor ingredients can also be added at this point to enhance desired nutritional content and to meet the poultry formula feed requirements. Container 5 is the pelletization container. The blended mix can now be fed into the pelletizer to produce the final product after an additional drying step for shelf stability. Food waste that would have previously gone to landfill has now been repurposed and transformed into value-added product. This is a global problem. There's food waste everywhere and there's chickens everywhere. So uh, our licensing model allows us to deliver quickly this type of facility globally. Any town with a population of 10, 12 or 15,000 people is capable of having a small facility converting all their food waste into poultry feed and then moving it on to the poultry farms that are generally in their area anyway. The only model that is capable of spreading this out quickly to thousands of locations across the globe and hundreds and hundreds of locations in Australia is the licensing model that Food Recycle Limited is offering. That license gives those people the opportunity to use the technology for 20 years. We supply the machinery and the equipment under that license so that we know that the standard for all the poultry feed is going to be maintained through the manufacturing process. We have to ask ourselves the question, where are we going to get the feed to feed the animals that feed us? So we have to get smarter about it. 
If we collected all the food waste in the world, we couldn't produce enough poultry feed. But we can make a big dent in what's required to come off farmland. We can probably produce 30 to 40% of all the food that's needed for poultry and pigs if we get smart about it and collect that food.